it's undervalued relative to gold. And there is enough silver at the margin to keep these prices where they are. I mean, even though everyone talks about how much suppression there is in the futures market, and that's true, but at the margin, meaning when you have to take physical silver off of either the exchange or refinery or directly from a mine, that demand is being met for the most part, you know, inflated. So there's lots of answers to your question, but I, I think that outlined it fairly well. While we're on the topic of optics, uh, something else I want to bring up are your thoughts on the U.S. dollar. You say, quote, while the news says the dollar is going up, we know the real story. The purchasing value of that dollar has been in a steep decline. Rent, food, gas, cars, real estate have all gone through the roof. You say we've been deceived into thinking our fiat system is fine. What do you mean by that? Well, again, optics. So it's, I'll try to give an analogy. This is off the top of my head, but you know, if you're racing a Volkswagen and you have a Ford Mustang, you can just, you know, blow the doors off of it, you know, on a street race. But, and so then you measure everything on that one race, you know, so look at that. So the dollar is strong against all the other contenders. But if you look at the reality of something like stood the test of time like gold, which might be something like uh, oh, a, a Lamborghini, and it gets in a race, it's just going to blow the doors off that Mustang. But that's something that no one really sees, talks about, or, very, or is very knowledgeable about. They all know the Lamborghini's there, but they don't see it in action. And that's sort of my analogy, is that you see real money will usurp fake money. But as I've said again many times, we trust what we trust. And most people have taught to believe okay. or have faith in paper money. And they will more and more as the stock market goes down, the bond market crashes, the corporate zombie banks or zombie corporations uh, blow away. The, the faith will be in that piece of paper and more or less rightfully so. But as that starts to drift away because of 9% inflation and food scarcity and rent increases and oil prices, that is when you get that psychological shift that moves into something of real substance and that's in the past always been the precious metals. So, so let me let me see if I got that. So, because this is the number one question I'm, I'm sure you hear, right? Um, if it with inflation, you know where it's at. Why aren't gold prices higher? And then we always hear the response. Well, it's the strength of the U.S. dollar. But you're saying a, it's not it's not a real strength, and b, it's just because investors are not seeing that gold is there as an option. Is it that lack of interest in gold that's missing? Primarily. If you go back to the first bull market, and as you know, I was old enough to be in it, you had, and no one knows these numbers for sure, but you had somewhere around 1% or two, well, it depends who you read, but maybe two or 3% waiting for most investors into the precious metals. And now it's about 1% or half a percent. So the idea is that if we just go back to what took place in the 1970s, that would triple the demand for gold and silver, and this would take these prices in paper terms far, far higher. And I believe that's ahead of us. Okay, well, that, that echoes a lot of conversations I've been having with some experts on the sidelines that, you know, the moment that money does start flowing into gold, that's, that's when we really see uh, a quite a, a remarkable rally in the metal. Um, on the topic of silver, I'm interested to get your thoughts. You've spoken and written at nauseum about how silver is crucial uh, to our society. Uh, we need it in everything. And I know you get asked this all the time of why it's not moving higher. Uh, but what's, um, what's, what's going on with silver here, David? Well, <laughs> it's undervalued. It's undervalued relative to gold. And there is enough silver at the margin to keep these prices where they are. I mean, even though everyone talks about how much suppression there is in the futures market, and that's true, but at the margin, meaning when you have to take physical silver off of either the exchange or refinery or directly from a mine, that demand is being met for the most part, which is the only way you can keep the paper price where it is. However, we're starting to see cracks in the system, and mm -hmm. that is because these sovereign mints are not producing the amount of coinage that the demand requires. In fact, the U.S. Mint is the primary example. 
The United States Mint's mandate is to produce as many silver eagles as the market demands. And yet the market demands a lot more than they're producing. And that means the premium has gone sky high. I mean, it's like $14 in some instances. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a that's a subtle clue that something's not right in the silver market. Another one that goes completely conspiracy theory, so I'll don my tinfoil hat, but that's a semiconductor industry. The semiconductor industry uses 44 million ounces of silver per year. Now, I'm not saying the shortage in semiconductors is because of lack of silver availability, but I'm not saying the opposite either. And, and interesting, I was going to say I had you know, seeing the premiums on silver re products recently. And I was like, wow. So obviously demand is there. Like you said, it shows that there's something um, seriously wonky going on. Um, so interesting. Um, finally, uh, David, just to wrap our conversation here, um, final thoughts for, for investors and our audience watching. I know you s started off the segment by saying, you know, uh, you were okay given the current circumstances. Um, you know, what just some closing remarks here from you? Well, thank you for having me on the show. I am of the idea of balance. I think that you don't need to be weighted too heavily in the precious metals. There's probably still opportunities in the stock markets. I've never been that favorable to bonds, but in some cases they probably apply. I think one of the best places to be in this type of environment are you know, needs, needs would be like ADM. I recommended ADM at, at 35. One of my members in the, in the private group or premium service asked me, I want to hedge food. You keep talking about food. And this was well before it became uh, something that was talked about daily. So ADM, and it went down. It went from 35, I forget where, but now I think it's at 75. And like utilities, I mean, utilities aren't going away. One of the best utilities you can ever get is a water investment. And these are things that are very often not even spoken about. And those would be, you know, good investments. Uh, one of my readers, again, has asked me to kind of look at alternatives to the precious metals. And I don't have time to follow them in, in, in depth, but I have enough time to ferret out which ones are the best in that type of sector. So food, energy, water, that type of thing. And I think self-reliance, you know, looking to get a handout is not the attitude that we have for a free society, no matter what jurisdiction you're in or what the ideology is of your authoritarian figures. It's more freedom demands responsibility. And you have to be responsible for your own decisions. And that's something that I think has been lost on some parts of society, that they are not responsible, that they are a victim, that circumstances are against them. But the only thing we really can, there's very few things as humans we can control, but one of them is our attitude. And our attitude has to be that you have the ability to do X. You have the ability to find a different job if you ha hate the one you're in. You have the ability to save more if you cut back on this or that. I mean, there's a lot of things that people don't empower themselves because they're, th they're taught from the time we start in the public schooling system that you need to depend on someone else, not on yourself, where really the way to true, true wealth, I'm not talking about money, I'm talking about individual freedom, starts with the individual being empowered and empowered not only through their own efforts, but by those of others around them that understand that there's nothing, nothing more powerful than the truth or as powerful as a true free individual. Unfortunately, as a society at large, we've lost that.